we've never seen anything like him. He really has it all. He heads to San Antonio, following in the footsteps of fellow number one picks, Tim Duncan, David Robinson. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and learn as quick as possible because I want to win that ring. With the first pick in the 2023 NBA Draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Victor Wembanyama from Non Tower Players. That's how it sounded as the Spurs drafted Victor Wembanyama, number one overall. Brandon Miller went two to the Hornets, and the Blazers took Scoot Henderson, three. Thompson Twins. Amen went four to Houston. His brother Osar went, Osar went fifth to the Pistons. They became the first brothers to be drafted in the top five of the same draft since the 1976 ABA-NBA merger. Meantime, Kawhi Leonard underwent a cleanup procedure on the torn meniscus in his right knee and is expected to be 100% ready for L.A. Clippers training camp in October. Clippers president of basketball operations, Lawrence Frank, said that the team's franchise forward, quote, feels great and has an eight-week recovery timetable from when he underwent the procedure on June 6th. So he ought to be ready to go. The Chicago Bulls, however, do not expect Lonzo Ball to be ready to go at all next year. Ball 25 missed all the 2022-23 season, underwent cartilage transplant surgery on his left knee in March, the third surgery on his knee since he appeared in his last game on January 14th. 2022. That is a shame. He is a good basketball player, man. Just career getting destroyed by injuries. Only 25 still. Sports Center is presented by Progressive Insurance. Insurance for motorcycles, boats, and RVs. For protection on the road and on the water, see how much you can save at 1 800 Progressive and Progressive.com. Listen, baby. Ooh, ain't no mountain high. This is Keyshawn J. Willie Max coming to you live from the Seaport District at Pier 17, brought to you by Chase. And we are joined now by our own personal general manager, Mike Tannenbaum, ESPN NFL front office insider and former NFL executive. He was, he was the GM of what, by Jet standards, must seem like a dynasty. They went to an AFC championship game for crying out loud. Mike Tannenbaum, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Mike T? Mike T. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we doing? Good. Real, real quick, Mike T, it's an ongoing theme here at the show. Do you go to barbecues or cookouts during the summertime? Which one? I'm available for both. You know, <laughs> I think it's uh, more barbecues in the South, yeah. but I'm available for cookouts. Available it's a little bit like both. Tannenbaum or Tannenbaum, right? <laughs> <laughs> Frank said that the team's franchise forward, quote, feels great and has an eight-week recovery timetable from when he underwent the procedure on June 6th. So he ought to be ready to go. The Chicago Bulls, however, do not expect Lonzo Ball to be ready to go at all next year. Ball 25 missed all the 2022-23 season, underwent cartilage transplant surgery on his left knee in March, the third surgery on his knee since he appeared in his last game on January 14th, 2022. That is a shame. He is a good basketball player, man. Just career getting destroyed by injuries. Only 25 still. Sports Center is presented by Progressive Insurance. Insurance for motorcycles, boats, and RVs. For protection on the road and on the water, see how much you can save at 1-800-PROGRESSIVE and Progressive.com. Listen, baby. Ain't no mountain high. This is Keyshawn J. Willemax coming to you live from the Seaport District at Pier 17, brought to you by Chase. And we are joined now by our own personal general manager, Mike Tannenbaum, ESPN NFL front office insider and former NFL executive. He was, he was a GM of what, by Jet standards, must seem like a dynasty. They went to an AFC championship game for crying out loud. Mike Tannenbaum, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Mike T? Mike T. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we doing? Good. Real, real quick, Mike T, it's an ongoing theme here at the show. Do you go to barbecues or cookouts during the summertime? Which one? 
I'm available for both. Yeah. You know, I think it's uh, more barbecues in the South. Yeah. But I'm available for cookouts. It's a little it's bit like Tannenbaum or Tannenbaum, right? <laughs> what a great answer. I'm available. I'm going to start Me saying too, that. Mike. Me too, Mike. Me too. Available to me both, for both. All day. Mike, what's the hardest part of drafting? <laughs> it's the intangibles, right? You really want to know what, what these young men are like, be it basketball, football, baseball, whatever it may be. You know, Coach Belichick always said fundamentally the best guys – when you draft a player, the two things they're going to have more at the pro level than the college level is more time and more money. And how are they going to handle those two things? Some are going to thrive and want to get better, and some aren't. So you want to be able to tear these people in half and see what oozes out of them. Are they competitors? Are they selfless? Um, what are What's their makeup? Why do they want to be great? Those are the questions that anybody wants to answer before they draft a player. Yo, Mike, have you ever had a player in your tenure in the NFL – that was extremely loyal, but it was also almost like a passive aggressive loyalty, right? Like where you saw him talk, it was like, hey, well, if they're moving in this direction, I don't really want to be here, but I want to be here. I, it, obviously, there's a situation going on with Dame in Portland, and they have some decisions to make about whether they want to rebuild or whether they want to build around him now to win now. If you were in that position, how would you handle that relationship in particular? Jay, well, that's a great question because we know he's such a talented player. I would bring him in and bring him closer to the process. When I've hit those bumps in the road, I bring in Dana, I bring in you know his agent, any other meaningful relative, and say, hey, look, here's where we are. We can move forward together. We can try to bring in another meaningful piece and try to win and compete with the Golden States and the Denvers of the world. Or if that doesn't make sense to you, like tell us, and then we're going to try to maximize you know, while we want to do what's good for you, we got to do what's best for us as well. So let's just have an earnest conversation. Let's put all the cards on the table and then let's try to move forward shoulder to shoulder and try to do something meaningfully here. Here's our plan. If you have a problem with that, let's talk about it here and then we could adjust accordingly. Best thing about Mike T, if he was a, an NBA GM, is even if they were capped out, you know what he would do, Jay? He would scour. He would scour. Is that right or wrong, Mike T? Scour would you market. scour the G League, scour overseas? Max, it's the same verb. If we're at a cookout, if we're at a barbecue, yes. if we're trying to collect, we're going to scour as best we That's can. That's right. My, scour. My, Mike, it, it, just because I think it, it, the similarities are very interesting. When you, and I, I, it's unfortunate he's not here today because I would love to hear actually the backstory, but like you and Key, obviously like you, you, you felt the need to make that deal that it worked out for both sides. Did, did Key give you a list of teams? Like, hey, if I am going to be traded, this is where I would like to be traded. Did you guys have that kind of communication or was it more so you saying, Hey, here are the teams that are giving us the best trade assets in return. Here's where we're thinking about sending. Or did you not even have that communication at all? Yeah, no, we, we did. And I know we've joked a lot about it over the years, but it actually went relatively well, just from a standpoint of like, look, there was, you know, some economic goals that he wanted. We just weren't in the position to do that. 